Do we have a choice in whether or not we are part of the battle? We've been talking about the spiritual battle all week. And the question today is, are we part of that spiritual battle? And as you look at scripture, the answer is a resounding yes. Whether we choose to engage in it or not, the battle is there. We are a part of it. In fact, what we're going to see today is that Satan's entire goal is to gain more flat followers. We are the subject of the battle. Um, you know, God is building his kingdom. He is using his followers to build his kingdom and we can engage in this battle. So, you know, when you look at a typical battle, a lot of times you'll see nation against nation and they're fighting over um, resources. They're fighting over property. They're fighting over their territories and building their territories. Well, in this case, in spiritual battle, it's not so much a land territory kind of thing. It's more of a people territory kind of thing. And that brings us to Ephesians set, um, chapter six. Now we're gonna be in Ephesians in a couple of days. Um, I think it's on Thursday that we're gonna be looking at the spiritual armor. But today we're starting in verse 12 and it says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic flat powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. All right, we need to break this down. We need to understand what this is saying. So what it's saying here is we're not struggling against a worldly human being leader. We are struggling against rulers and authorities. Satan has some authority, but Jesus Christ has way more authority and it trumps, it, um, that's a bad choice of word, but it overshadows any authority that Satan has. But we've got to be aware that those cosmic powers over this present darkness is Satan's power, Satan's influence. In Revelation 16, 12, we see the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings of the east. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon, the dragon represents Satan, and out of the mouth of the beast, that's the Antichrist, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits like frogs. For they are demonic spirits performing signs who go abroad to the kings of the world to assemble them for battle on the great day of, the all, of God Almighty. So what we have here is we have Satan, we have the Antichrist, we have the prophet who helps to propel the Antichrist into a position of power. They are going to all these worldly leaders, gathering them together to prepare for this big battle. Verse 15. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeps his garments on. That's reflecting back to that um, spiritual armor we'll talk about in a couple of days. That he may not go about naked and be seen exposed. And they assemble them at the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. So this assembling of all these people that Satan has been trying to gather since Genesis is happening in preparation for this battle of Armageddon. So whether we wanna be a part of it or not, we are a part of this spiritual battle. If we turn a blind eye to it, it doesn't mean it's not there. It just means we're gonna get completely run over. We're gonna end up being um, a puppet of Satan. Satan is going to be using us to build his kingdom rather than God using us to build his kingdom. In 2 Corinthians 10 verses three through five, it says, for though we walk in the flesh, okay, you look at my hand, that is flesh. We are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Remember that as we prepare to start to talk about the spiritual armor. It has to, those, the weapons that we have have power to destroy the strongholds that Satan is so desperately trying to build. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion, we just saw this on Sunday, and raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. It is our job to be aware of those arguments, be aware of those lofty opinions, and make no bones about it. Satan is in our churches. Satan is there in our churches and he is doing everything he can to imitate, mimic, 
or copy what God is trying to do and then twist it. And he twists it with a subtle little lie in the hopes that we won't notice. And then there's another lie. And then there's another lie. And eventually you've, you've fallen for it and you've gotten into that spirit of religion, which is a demonic spirit. We've got to be aware of that. Now, this last passage I have, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but in Mark 5, we see where Jesus casts a demon out of a man, and those demons have to ask for permission from Jesus. That is showing his power, his glory, and his majesty, that, that the weapons that he gives us are strong enough to break those strongholds. Have a wonderful day. God bless, and keep walking the walk.